Thank you, Mr. Chaturvedi and uh, IPPAI for having me here. This morning we heard people speaking about the diversity of ideas and the diversity of people that's represented by a country like India. India also has this extraordinary diversity of living organisms, biological diversity. We have four of the world's biodiversity hotspots within our country. And as a wildlife scientist, I spend most of my working life in forests studying species like this. And uh, today, what uh, I uh, want to bring to the table here is a discussion of the possible ecological impacts that some of the uh, projects, uh, such as roads and power lines, have on, on these species. Now, I will not be talking about the EIA-related issues or the so-called brown issues of pollution, because they are generally well known and well, uh, I, I think all of you must be aware of it, but more focused on wildlife and forest related issues. We have a more detailed uh, uh, article in the knowledge document that was just released by the minister. And uh, there's also uh, an article by an environmental journalist. So please do take a look at that, at the issues in the, in the power sector. Since this session is about power lines, I will try and focus more on power lines itself. I think while a lot of concerns uh, don't really make it to the news, there is one thing that does come out in the newspaper. That is when large animals, our national heritage animal, the a Asian elephant, gets killed. They get electrocuted. And this is now becoming a very fairly serious issue. We have dozens of elephants which are being, uh, which are encountering these low power lines that are passing through forests. Uh, some of them are the regular power lines. Some of them are illegal lines drawn from these power lines. And, uh, and, they, and, and, they, and they are dying. So more elephants today are in fact uh, dying due to electricity than due to poachers. And th this is not just the mortality of elephants itself that's a concern, but it's one added issue that elephants face as an endangered species in, in our present day landscapes. As it is uh, forests are fragmented, elephants encounter fences, encounter farms, there are a lot of difficulties in moving from one uh, a patch of forest to the other, and this becomes an added issue in this landscape. But wild species, uh, and there could be solutions for this. So for instance, in the Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary, uh, there is a 20 kilometer long fully insulated power line that passes through the park, where, uh, which minimizes this risk. In Periyar Tiger Reserve, there is an example of power lines sent underground to prevent either disturbance to the habitat above ground, the forest, or, to the, or, or in terms of the risk of electrocution. But it's not just species like elephants which come into the news. There's a whole range of other species as well. One example is the great Indian bustard. This is a uh, critically endangered bird species found nowhere else in the world. It's largely found within India. It's down to less than 200 birds in the wild. In our lifetimes, we might see this species vanish. And several birds are being electrocuted on the power line. And one point I'd like to make about uh, species like the bustard is that these live in habitats which are usually seen as wastelands. They live in grasslands, they live in scrublands, which we uh, you know, tend to ignore. But these two are vital ecosystems that need to be conserved. And when projects are planned in these habitats, we have to take this into consideration. Another example is the Saras crane, the tallest flying bird in the world, which is you know, very well regarded. It's very important in Indian culture and tradition. And today, we're finding that Saras cranes are encountering large larger mortality along power lines. A study done 10 years ago found 1% annual mortality just due to power lines. And the, uh, we don't have recent figures, but it appears that it, it may be higher. These are power lines passing through wetlands and through agricultural fields, where virtually all the population of this species occurs. Uh, this is an example from where I work in the Anamalai Hills, the um, uh, lion-tailed macaque, an arboreal primate. It lives only in the trees of the evergreen forest, so there are a few thousand individuals left in the wild. And when closed canopy evergreen forests such as this are split by roads and power lines, this is one direct impact that has. As animals try to cross between uh, trees, they, uh, they may risk mortality. Just to give you a picture, Less than 5% of India is in these kind of protected areas, like wildlife sanctuaries and national parks. The flagship park is Bandipur Tiger Reserve. And this is just a Google Earth image of Bandipur, just taking you a little closer. You can see how the forest is already crisscrossed by a number of roads. In addition to roads, there are often railway lines, and here's a power line also going right through the park. 
There's more than uh, one to two kilometers of such linear structures for every square kilometer of forest. There is no place you can go where you're maybe more than uh, a few hundred meters from one of these, uh, what ecologists call linear intrusions in the forest. And why is this important? What effects do they have? In the case of things like roads, the effects are very direct. There is a, lo a lot of mortality of animals. There are a whole range of studies showing this now, but I won't talk about that now. There is direct impact in terms of loss of forests, which are cleared for establishment of power lines, as you can see, and roads, as you can see in these two images. But it's not just the habitat that's lost along the power line itself that is important. Uh, you know, uh, you also have, uh, this is another example of a Heidel project pow uh, pipeline. There are ancillary uh, structures which are developed in the area for affecting these projects that lead to what we call forest fragmentation. What used to be a continuous tract of forest is now broken into two or more bits. And there are many species that just can't survive in these bits of habitat. They need the larger chunks of habitats that are connected together. In addition, when you have closed canopy forests like this, this is an evergreen forest. If you walk into the forest and look up, you see the trees are you know, completely enmeshed. There are places where you won't even see the sky overhead. But when a road or a power line goes through, that canopy breaks. And that brings some animals. If it's a small break, you know, animals may be able to easily cross that. But if it's a large break, you know, and multiple breaks, not just power lines, but roads as well, then uh, it becomes a far more difficult issue because it brings with it forest degradation. So for instance, along those power lines and roads, you have a higher wind speeds, you have a higher rate of tree mortality. In Bandipur, studies have found that the, tree, the death of trees increases twofold along roads as compared to far away from roads. We don't have power line specific studies, but there is tree mortality. There is severe erosion. And very important is the spread of invasive species, what, what we call weeds that spread along the disturbance created by the power line or road and then penetrate into the forest on either side. So even though the area lost is actually quite small, the area impacted can be quite substantial in these, in these projects. And here's an example of a power line that's going way up over a valley, but the uh, 50 meter strip of forest is cut all the way down the valley and up the other side. So that creates a huge fragmentation effect and a conduit for the spread of invasive species. Is this really necessary is a question that we can ask. Here's an example of a power line. This is from California, which has been established with very minimal disturbance to the forest vegetation. There is a road alongside as well. But perhaps there are ways in which we can do this better in terms of implementing power, power line projects with minimal disturbance to, uh, to habitat and other species. So when we, uh, earlier with the National Board of Wildlife, we came up with a, a potential, a policy priority schema. You can see I'm not using the word the, I'm using the word a policy priority schema, where we tried to outline a four-step process. It said that there are some areas in India which are really precious <coughs> for wildlife and for species. So perhaps we should really think of preventing new linear infrastructure intrusions into these areas, uh, because these are vital, these are irreplaceable. Uh, there was also a decision taken by the National Board for Wildlife that when power line projects are proposed through these areas, that uh, they always come up with an alternate realignment proposal that would avoid these areas with the corresponding costs, et cetera, so that you can take a call on the relative costs as well as the benefit to ecology and to society. There are a lot of opportunities to restore areas. We know many uh, cases of defunct power lines, pipelines, where we can restore the vegetation and you know uh, undo the damage that has happened in the past. And finally, yes, uh, just uh, one more slide. And finally, there are options for mitigation, which are uh, uh, developing, uh, like I uh, gave you a couple of examples of how to minimize those effects on wildlife. So uh, my intention in coming here and giving this talk to you is to find these opportunities and loopholes and uh, try to work together such that we can frame rules and guidelines to develop these kind of infrastructure in a more ecologically responsible manner in the future. This is something that the ecologists can't do. It really needs the knowledge and skills of people like you. You have to, uh, the, it, it, it's, it's really an act of leadership. It is something that uh, uh, will have to come uh, by an application of both mind and heart from, from people like you and perhaps 
In the future, we can come up with a new kind of PPP model where uh, we place equal emphasis on people, planet, and profits. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Higgins.